So today I'd like to walk you through the development and operation of these two devices here. Uh, these are built around a LoRa radio and ESP32 microcontroller and they're designed to communicate with each other, this being the controller and this being the remote unit. So we're going to have a look at the main operation of these two units, uh, the different functions that they've got, the 3D models that go into it and what we can do with it in the future. This is the remote unit, which is used, obviously, remotely. It's based on an ESP32 microcontroller from Haltech, being the wireless stick V3. And it's got a small battery, which is just big enough to fit in between the header pins. And then it slots into this part of the housing, which keeps it connected to the rest of the unit. This is connected to see the antenna for LoRa and to this small 9 gram servo which is actuating this pin through these four gates. So the signal is received through the LoRa radio decoded in the ESP32 and then the command given to the servo to move in four in one of four different locations. This is the controller and the controller has basically a power switch to turn it on and then there's a series of four buttons and that's pretty much it. The signals that these buttons generate are encoded here and sent to the remote unit. So to have a little closer look at the 3D models this is effectively the remote unit which with a couple of uh, iterations just to get the profiles correct for the connection to the battery which we'll have a look at in a moment. It's a very simple model 3D prints quite easily. This is the low-key remote con or controller. It's in three parts. The main body which gives you the space to keep the ESP32 microcontroller and the battery which is slightly bigger in this one. The top which has got the space for the antenna and the power switch and then we've got the main button cover. It was made so large basically to accommodate the buttons that I've got. It's very basically it. There's bosses built into it to take uh, heat set inserts and then M2.5 nuts to attach everything. There's also another option for a more generic fit. Again, just two bosses for the servo to, to mount into and then the locking pin goes through those and then space here for the ESP32 and the battery. Now have a look at how these operate. We'll take it from, this is now powered on. This needs to be powered on as well. So turning on the power switch, we'll see two lights blink on the front, which means it's now powered on. And in order to pair it with the remote unit, we need to press and hold button one this puts the code into the arming mode or the un fully unlocked mode ready to lock and then in reverse order because the pin obviously moves from position 4 to 1 we press button 1 and it locks sorry we press button 4 and it locks position 4 press 3 locks 3 press 2 locks 2 and one logs number one. From that point, all the lights are solid and they blink periodically. The blinking is to indicate the there's a signal, a heartbeat that gets sent from the controller to the remote unit and an acknowledgement gets sent back. It's the acknowledgement that then makes this blink. And we use that just to make sure that we've still got a signal. So now it's ready to basically unlock each of those four positions we can press position 1, unlocks number 1, press 2, 
unlocks two. We'll notice that as we do this, when we press one, it sends a signal to the remote unit, moves the servo, then the acknowledgement that that is, that is completed comes back, then turns off the LED. So the LEDs are only turned off once it has acknowledgement from the remote unit that it has actually done the operation. So we should see three and acknowledged. And the same for four, and it goes off. From this point, it's back to idle, where it just sends periodically heartbeats. Press and hold one. Goes back into the locking mode, ready to lock each of the positions. And then just finally to unlock. That's it. Very simple. Um, still a little bit of work to do on the code. I want to get it so that when it pairs, it shares an encryption key and uses some basic encryption on the packets. At the moment, they're sent on plain text. There's nothing to stop other units from currently being able to basically receive the same messages. So if you have two of these, they'll both interact with the same messages from the controller. This unit now is designed to mount on the DJI FPV. You see that this battery has been removed from the drone and it is designed so that this quite snugly fits onto the battery. So if we just start by fitting it like that and then we should just get it the right way around. Start it like that and then it just clips. So you can see that that's very solidly attached to the back of the battery pack. There, I haven't. The only way to remove that from where the weight would be attached to it would be to probably break it. Um, as it's 3D printed, it's probably entirely possible, but in practice, that's not coming off. So this makes it very easy to then attach the whole thing to the drone just using the normal battery connector. doesn't interfere with the drone in any way. And we plug the battery in and then we're fully connected. It's pretty low profile. It doesn't take a lot of space on the back of the drone and it generally keeps everything out of the way of the propellers. This is the other example of what could be used. And this could fit under anything else or some standalone unit where you needed to lock and unlock. This isn't the end of the solution either. This is just a very small servo doing a very lightweight job. Um, but the, as long as you can power the servo and send the control signal from the controller, those same four positions could be used to actuate anything. So maybe even a a big heavy powered door for example. Let's just round this off with a, a short demonstration. Got a series of little washers and we will simulate loading up four payloads. So we're ready to go. Number four. Number three, number two, number one. So now we've got four payloads locked in the device, and now we can release them by pressing one to four. So three, two, one. And two, three, four. Simple as that.